I've got these files in my social media that I've named cool people who deserve the world. And today we're gonna dig through that and gas some of y'all up, YouTube commentary style. Before we get too much into this video, I do wanna say my goal was to mostly highlight small creators and beginner sewists, but because Instagram is not filtering things by recent, it's only allowing you to filter things by top, um, I was not able to find <laughs> any. So there will be some from Facebook groups thrown in here just because I was trying to make do with what I could physically find on the internet these days. The first person that I wanted to force you to look at is this lady, Vin, Vin, Vanessa. And the longer that I look at this picture, the happier that I am. Apparently this sewing machine belonged to her mother before her, and she actually sewed all of her baby clothes on it, which makes me so, so happy. <laughs> That's just so cool to me. And look at her cute little pupper who's helping her sew. That is precious. I wish my dogs could help me sew, but they are huge and that would not go well. He actually also has an Instagram, this little doggo here. His name is Zuko Dashibi, and he is just the cutest little bean I have ever seen. Also, I just have to say this because props to you, girl. She is planning a wedding in the middle of a pandemic, which I've been there and it's not fun. So massive props to you, Vanessa. I hope you have a fantastic wedding and you keep on sewing on. When I saw this next picture, it made my fingers physically hurt, but it is so beautiful. Look at this. This person painstakingly hand stitched all of these tiny little hexagons. And look, that in this corner up there, that is her finger for scale. So these are itty itty bitty. This looks impossibly fiddly. I, it's fantastic. And, and everything is so even and well done. Do you even see how even her stitches are? Those are hand done stitches. I, that is fantastic. This is apparently a dollhouse blanket. When I first saw it, I thought she was doing a full sized like human blanket or baby blanket. And that made me weep for her. <laughs> but thankfully these are just little miniature ones. So the end is in sight for her. She has a lot of work like this, and she actually also has an Etsy shop where she sells quilt patterns. So I will link that down in the description box below if you happen to be in the market for a mermaid quilt. Who isn't? Oh, and this rug here in this picture, that's also hand embroidery. This woman is insane. In my head, I've been calling this lady the happy potato lady because she's so happy and she has that little potato. Cute, right? I'm a sucker for hand done prints in general. And I think that this is a brilliant way to do it because you get that one print that one time and it's really motivating and you can't stop halfway through. Perfect. I actually might have to try a potato print for myself because it looks like it'd be really easy to carve. You might be able to do that with just a, 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 a butter knife. You might not even need like fancy carving tools. But this lady, Rudy Gertz, coolest name ever. She's also a passionate slow fashion advocate, as you can see by these painstakingly lined up potato prints that she's done. That is not easy to do. You can also tell she is a slow fashion fan by how often she posts pictures of herself with super cute darning work. Look at those stitches, so even. This is gonna be just the theme of this episode, me screaming so even into the heavens. Prepare yourself. I love it when people darn things in a really bold and visible way. Cause like when I do mending work, I tend to try to make it disappear at the end, but then that's so unmotivating. Cause it's like you spend a half hour doing something that's gone at the end of it, you know? So I might actually just start punkishly making it visible because ugh, that's pretty and I like it. And I've seen other people do visible mending this way and it just, mm, it makes my soul happy. Every time that I look at visible mending like this, it just makes me wanna grab a potato, stuff it in a sock with a hole and get going. Conspiracy. I think that Ruby might be doing every craft she does with the assistance of a potato. I see you, Rudy. 
But getting back on track, she is apparently also a pattern drafter and she has made this cute little fanny pack and she worked really hard on it. So I'm gonna link that down in the description box below because it's super cute. And if you're looking for a fanny pack, hey, why not use this one? You know that moment, like, five minutes before an event where you're planning on wearing your latest make but you're trying to decide if it'll bug you to just wear a slightly unfinished garment. That's all I could think of when I saw this picture of Omi? Arrow Mountain. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> okay so she is in fact sewing the button to her collar right now with the collar around her neck. I don't know if she's using a mirror or what, but this is incredibly impressive. Even just like brushing your hair in a mirror is kind of hard because you're like, which side and it's, it's hard to orient. So props to you, man. But she does these really awesome wooden buttons and they're really cool because they're biodegradable. So they're not gonna be around like 200 years after you are still choking pelicans. And I really love how creative they are. Like this tulip one that features like a little bit of embroidery in the design and there's ones that you could do like um a cross stitch type design in because they have so many holes drilled in them it's really cool highly recommend checking it out now because instagram isn't showing me any of the good stuff i'm gonna hop over to my facebook pile and we're gonna gas up some of those ladies and yes i did ask people for permission before putting things that they put in a private group on facebook in this video because just seems like the right thing to do. Before I show you these before and after pics, I want to tell you Mama Jessica's story. Her four-year-old picked the eyes off of their like beloved panda toy, just like picked them off with their little tiny fingers. I'm impressed, honestly. And I take it they were originally like glued on. You can tell by the glue residue that's still on the face and naturally this kid was absolutely distraught after doing this so um <laughs> sorry it's like staring at me staring into my soul um but she rebeautified the bear by um sewing little felt eyes that she made back on that's so much better um, honestly, it's still a bit creepy and Mama Jessica said it herself, but I still think it's really cute. And if the kid's happy, I'm happy for the kid. And this is much more than most people would do. Most people, if their kid picked the eyes off of a toy, would just throw it out instead of painstakingly hand sewing on new eyes. I guess that's not really painstaking. I've been throwing that word around a lot. But the funny thing is, there were a bunch of people in the comment section saying that they do this for their dogs. <laughs> like, spoiled puppies indeed. <laughs> if my dog destroys something, it goes into like the, the fabric recycling bin. We do not repair it and give it back to the dog to destroy again. But then again, I have like a wolf pack and I, I don't think that they're very kind to their toys. We usually have to get the rubber ones. I don't know. I guess if your dog was really attached to something, it'd be different. Hmm. Let me know in the comments down below. Do your, do your dogs just like eat things that you give them to play with or do they, you know, bond with them and play with them nicely? Cause mine don't do that. This next one is pretty crazy. This lady Zoe here took this jacket and I'm just gonna let you watch this video that she made because it's kind of awesome. shawl she styled it with is precious. I'm pretty sure that she made that little choker collar as well, but I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it's really cute with this. And the coolest thing is that she did this whole entire thing by hand because she doesn't have a machine. So this is all needle and thread craziness. Honestly, I personally loathe sewing tough leather things by hand. I 
am really impressed. So all power to Yuzo. I honestly love watching people design fantasy style clothes with little to no reference. Like, don't get me wrong, I love cosplay, but whenever someone just like pops an idea into their head and makes it happen, mm, my bread and butter. I love that so much. And I really love this final look. Like, it's really cool. I think she's wearing it to go like LARPing or I, I don't know. I get the feeling that this is like a, a worn for something thing. I wonder if any of that made sense. Anyway, that's all I have today, friends. Uh, I do feel the need to say that this wasn't sponsored, regardless of the fact that like everyone in this video was a small creator. Um, that was entirely coincidental. Don't really know how that happened. The US election, the gift that just won't stop giving. Even so, all of these creators are super fun, but in the future, these will feature more salt of the earth average Joe sewists and less people who are technically professionals. Mostly because I want to encourage as many people as possible to pick up a needle against fast fashion, because honestly, these corporations don't know what you want to wear. You do. Bye, friends. <laughs>